Happy Fourth Advent Sunday to everyone. The COVID-19 pandemic has thrown the world out of gear and the world is yet to get back to normalcy. Let us thank God for keeping us safe and sound even in the midst of the dreaded pandemic. As we know, the first four Sundays before Christmas is observed as the Advent Sundays in the Christian calendar. Each Advent Sunday has a theme which differs from church to church. Peace is the theme for the fourth Advent Sunday for many churches around the world. Therefore, I have chosen to preach today on the topic, Peace Through Christ. I hope and pray that this sermon will be a blessing to all of us. For clarity of thought, I have divided the topic, Peace Through Christ, into three subheadings. We shall examine the three subheadings one after the other. First, peace with God through Christ. The Almighty God is holy and righteous. He is also a God of justice. God judges and rewards both the righteous and the sinners according to their deeds. The Bible tells us that God created the first couple and put them in the Garden of Eden where they had perfect peace with God and all the creation, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. But when the first couple disobeyed God, their harmonious relationship with God broke down and they were chased out from the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3. When God gave his laws to the ancient Israel, he prescribed blood offerings for forgiveness of sins. Leviticus chapter 4. If anyone has committed a trespass and sins unintentionally against the Lord, he has to bring a ram without blemish to the priest for guilt offering. Then the priest will make the atonement on behalf of the guilty, and the guilty will be forgiven. Leviticus chapter 5, verses 14 to 19. As we see in the Bible, the Israelites could not be saved by this law of sin offering. Meanwhile, God promised a suffering servant who would be wounded and crushed for the sins of the world. Isaiah 53 verses 4 to 6. Finally, God sent his son Jesus into this world and our Lord Jesus Christ died for the salvation of the world. Speaking of the atoning sacrifice of Jesus, the Apostle John writes, He, that is Jesus, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 In the same manner, the writer to the Hebrews writes, And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. Jesus came as the Prince of Peace and he died as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. In other words, Jesus has reconciled the sinful world with the righteous God through his sacrifice. Dear friends, there are thousands of religions in the world. Every tribe or nation tries to connect with the Supreme Being or God through their religions. Like most other people, even our ancestors who followed the indigenous religions offer sacrifices either for seeking divine favor or to appease the supposed offended spirits. But no amount of religious sacrifice could reconcile the humans with God the Creator. Therefore, God finally sent His beloved Son Jesus our Lord into this world. Since the coming of Jesus Christ into this world, whoever believes in him is reconciled with God and attains eternal life. John 3 verse 16 By his death on the cross of Calvary, Jesus paid the full price for our sins and made the way for our salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the mediator and peacemaker between God and humans. Today, Whoever believes in Jesus Christ is reconciled with God and is at peace with God. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord today? 
If you want to be at peace with God today, just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. Believers have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Second, peace with self through Christ. Humans experience peace in the world both in the personal level and in the societal level. Peace in the personal level is often called as peace of mind. It is said that most of the people who do not have peace of mind commit suicide. If you don't have peace of mind, you cannot enjoy life even if there is peace in the society. On the other hand, if you have peace of mind, you can enjoy life even in the midst of troubles in the society. Even when Job was informed of the huge losses of his property and the death of all his ten children, Job kept his faith in God and had the peace of mind. On hearing the horrific news, Job fell on the ground and worshipped God, saying, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job chapter 1 verse 21. Job is one of the biblical characters who maintained his peace of mind, even in the midst of extreme suffering. Jesus knows that humans always worry for their lives, and for their material needs like food and clothing. In his Sermon on the Mount, therefore, Jesus taught the people not to worry, but to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, for God will provide all their needs. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. In other words, Jesus teaches the people not to be worried with this or that thoughts, but believe in God and have peace of mind. When Jesus told his disciples that one of them would betray him and that even their leader Simon Peter himself would deny him, the disciples were shocked and they began to worry. Perhaps some of the disciples were very depressed, thinking that they had made the wrong choice and that they were following the wrong person. Apparently, they were all troubled and they lost their peace of mind. As a result, Jesus comforted his troubled disciples by saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. John chapter 14 verse 1. Further, Jesus comforted his disciples by giving them his peace, saying, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus further told his disciples that the time has come when they would be scattered, each one to his home, and they would leave him alone. Before the disciples suffered the persecution, Jesus told them that they would suffer persecution, but he assured them of his peace. Jesus said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John chapter 16 verse 33. With the exception of Judas Iscariot, all other disciples suffered for the sake of Christ, but they all had the peace of mind, for their master Jesus had given them peace. His peace. They are believers. The world we live in has many problems and there is no sign of decline. Do you have peace of mind even in the midst of all these problems? No believer ever lived in a completely peaceful society for there has been never a perfect society. Job seems to have suffered the most and experienced the worst calamity in life, but he had the peace of mind. What is disturbing or troubling your mind this morning? What news often troubles your mind? What situation disturbs your peace of mind? If you do not have peace of mind, the Bible has a good news for you this morning. 
The Lord Jesus, who gave his peace to his troubled disciples, can give his peace to you today. Jesus is saying, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. If you are troubled for whatever reason, come to Jesus and ask him to grant you his peace. If you come to him, he will not deny you and let you down, but grant you his peace. May the Lord grant his peace to us, so that we will always have peace of mind in every situation. Third, peace with fellow humans through Christ. Just as the prophet Isaiah prophesied about the coming of a prince of peace in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, Jesus came as the Prince of Peace. When Jesus was born, the heavenly host praised God, singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Luke chapter 2 verse 14. The angels announced the coming of the heavenly peace on earth among the people of God. As the Prince of Peace, Jesus did not discriminate anyone on the basis of age, gender, or ethnicity, like the religious teachers of his time. Jesus welcomed the little children and blessed them, and he accepted the women to follow him. Jesus accepted the poor and the sick people, including lepers, and he also accepted the rich people, like Jacques, to follow him. Unlike the Jews of his time, Jesus did not show any racial attitude towards others. Jesus accepted both the Jews and the Gentiles. He healed the Jews, the Samaritans, and even the Romans. He rejected the Jewish racial discriminations of his day, for his mission is to reunite the humanity and bring peace to the human society. Following the examples of their master Jesus, the apostles preached the gospel to the Jews, to the Samaritans, and to people of all nations. Speaking of the unity in Christ, in his letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul writes, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. At the end of his letter to the Christians in Corinth, the Apostle Paul exhorts them to be at peace with one another. He writes, Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Jesus Christ has been the greatest peacemaker in the history of the world. No religion has brought peace into the world like Christianity does. Dear brothers and sisters, are you at peace with fellow neighbors and people around you? Do you favor some people as your friends and others as your enemies? In the past, the tribals in the Northeast India practiced head hunting and they fought many intra-tribal and inter-tribal wars. But when they received the gospel, they stopped their traditional headhunting practices and made peace with their traditional enemy villages in the name of Christ. We can proudly say that we have more peace in our societies because we have accepted Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, as our Lord and Savior today. As Christians, we are not supposed to have biased attitude against people on the basis of age, gender, background, or ethnicity. Jesus, our Master, did not show any bias against anyone. Rather, he accepted people of all ages, genders, and people from all ethnic backgrounds. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are to treat everyone equal and accept everyone as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. As Christians, let us be agents of peace wherever we are. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Today is the fourth Advent Sunday for the year 2020. We are going to celebrate Christmas in just five days from today. Let us be reminded that the Advent season is not just a waiting for the birth anniversary of Christ, but also a waiting for the return of Christ. When Christ returns, we shall see him face to face, and he will take us to the presence of God, for we are reconciled with God through him. Our Lord Jesus has given us his peace, and we long for the day when we shall all have the perfect peace in his presence. Jesus has brought peace among people of all races. Let us, therefore, follow the example of our Lord Jesus and be agents of peace in our world. When Jesus returns, we will experience the perfect peace for believers from all nations will gather before him and praise him in one accord. May this Advent season and Christmas Draw us closer to the perfect peace of God. Amen.